It is mandatory mini camp, which means we see Chase Young and Montez Sweat on the field. And we're checking out old Sam I Am on the field pass. I'm going to the local bakeries looking for some humble pie. And we get to look at Sam Howell and this Kansas City offense. And it all starts right now. And welcome on in, all lined up for you, Santana Moss, Fred Smoot, and Logan Paulson. Are we, are we going according to height here? Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, we are. Is hey, look, if we're, I'm a little taller. <laughs> just a little, just a little taller. We got a little more of that. <laughs> this show is all about Sam Howell because that is what you asked for, so we are making sure we give it to you. It is time for our Mission Debrief, presented by FedEx, where now meets next. And there is number 14 getting ready for mandatory OTAs. What have you seen here? Sam I Am dropping dimes. Oh, I like that. Sam I Am. No, I call him the Young Wolf. I think that's even better. Young Air Wolf, right? Yeah, yeah. Look, the Air Wolf. And I love that they're using the running backs, of course, in the passing game, seeing a lot of that early on. Yeah, the quick release, the strong ball delivery, like we talked about that earlier, how like that trajectory is so important when evaluating quarterback's arm. He's got great, great evaluation there. As a corner, we call it float. Do we float the ball? He oh, does not float the ball. All. The ball stays on a rope. Absolutely. And that's what you want to see. And since Tana, how about right where he's putting it in between the numbers? Man, that's one of the things that's been most impressive to me, just seeing he's hitting the open guy in stride, sitting him down when he needs to. Hey, man, he's doing everything that I want to see in a young guy. That guy's making plays for him out there, too. That's what we see from him at practice, but what about his new offensive coordinator, Eric Bieniemy? What does he see in his young quarterback? Sam's a very competitive kid. The thing I love about him, too, he's, he's smart. He understands some of the times when he's making mistakes. And the only thing he wants to know is what can he do to get better? More than anything, I'm enjoying just watching him work and watching how he handles the highs and the lows because you're going to have some of that throughout the course of, uh, of working during the offseason, just like you would if you were playing in the game. But the thing that I love about him is that he's always staying steady. His demeanor does not change, and he's very, very competitive. And, and I will say this. He auto-corrects himself as well, because he knows exactly what he did and what he should have done, which is a good thing. I'd say that's kind of relatively high praise from Eric bien -Aimé. He is a young quarterback, yeah. and he talks a lot of there about saying how he's learning to grow, right, asking the right questions, mm -hmm. learning from his own mistakes, and there's going to be plenty as this huddle is now officially his. And last week, we heard Sam say how different that mentality is. Fred, yeah. what is how much does that factor in knowing he goes from the third string guy to saying this is his to control? Well, most definitely, then having a whole off season to process that, having a whole off season to be with Coach B enemy, having a whole off season to set the expectation, not for himself, for the whole fan base, the mm -hmm. expectations is there, and him understanding the time is now. Do not let this slip between your fingers. There's only 32 people out of this world of 8 billion people that get to play quarterback and get to start quarterback. This is your time right It here. is his time, mm -hmm. and it's a dramatic shift from what it was before, but he is showing that he's kind of calm, cool, collective, no matter the highs or the lows. But, Logan, you're talking there are some good days and bad days from him as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think when E.B. was talking about that clip there, he's saying he's, he's handled both the highs and the lows, kind of staying pretty even keel throughout. And I think that's what you want to see from a guy who's going to be the leader of your offense, right? You don't want to see a guy who gets really depressed and sad when he has a bad day. You want to see a guy that's the king of the world when he has a good day. You want to see a guy that's even and learns from his mistakes. And you mentioned the auto-correction. I think that's absolutely right. He's not been perfect, but he's been solid and consistent. And I think that's something that really, really matters. Tana, when it comes to the vets, here's Terry McLaurin once again. He's already worked with 10 different quarterbacks since he has been here. He's got now a new guy to work with. Yeah. How can like the vets kind of help him and work him in? And how do they view it knowing that there's also a deeper set there as well? Just keep encouraging the young guy. Yeah. Just letting him know yeah. that we're here with you. You know, I've been in those shoes plenty of times. And especially when you have young guys, you you, can't, you kind of pay more um, attention to some of the things like those ups and those downs. Yeah. You yeah. want to see them when they're not going well mm -hmm. and make sure that you're there to give them a little pat on the back. Say, I got you. Yep, you know I'm there for you. Or let him know when, when you made a mistake yeah. and say, hey, that was my bad that time, so you was right. So yeah. that's all it's about. Just encouraging mm -hmm. the young fella and letting them know that we got you. You know, no matter what. And then, is it also related to kind of dictating a standard? Like you've been there, you've seen yeah. it, you know, you know what that looks like. And I think when you're a veteran guy, you can kind of say, "Hey, man, like this is what I'm expecting here. This is what this route looks yeah. like. This is yeah. what this coverage is going to dictate." Especially when you're a veteran receiver working with a younger you quarterback. Think, like, Sam, um, he's a sponge right now. Yeah. He's soaking up any and everything Absolutely. that he, he yeah. goes through right now, and he's going to be able to eliminate the bad stuff and know what the good is and, and know what the bad is. So, yeah. you know, it's very vital for those young guys, I mean, those older guys to go there and let him know that, yeah. hey, you know what, that was done wrong. Let's do this after practice sure. so we can yes. show each other how we need to do it. Yeah. So going forward, we have to correct it. 
And Terry McLaurin said that exact same thing. Yeah. I mean, he told me, look, sometimes it's going to require that I have to stay later at practice to work through it because he is a young quarterback. He is trying to figure it out. But if that's what it takes for us to be successful, for him yeah. to feel cold, so much control that huddle and command the huddle, yeah. that's what they have to do. Mm -hmm. But let's not forget, again, there is Jacoby Brissett out there. Head yeah. coach Ron Rivera even was talking about in his presser this week uh, that, look, it is a competition. Yeah. How many reps will Jacoby get in training camp with the ones? They're going to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. But how much competition is this really from what you see out there from them, Tana. Well, one of the things I would say is that you have to tell them that it's a competition. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it's not right. Every, every, every job think, is a competition. But I think there's a lot of truth to it. it I mean, is, they're giving so. Sam every chance. But that's that's also to tell a young fella, look here, this ain't yours. I yeah. know we've been telling you that it's yours. Yeah. So just know that somebody's in your back pocket and he need to have that kind of fire behind him. Yeah. That got to make sure that his sense of urgency is here. Yeah. You know what I mean, he's not yeah. sitting there like the days of cool and saying, okay, I can go out here and, and have these ups and down days yeah. and not have to worry about it. They're going to allow me to correct it. No, we're not going to allow you to continue to make those mistakes. We're going to make sure that you know when you do, we're going to pull you out and yeah. show you how it need to be done. And then let's see how long we have you out. And I think that speaks to Jacoby, right? And you yeah. bring in a guy of that caliber. I think if you would have kept Taylor here, it would have yeah. probably been Sam's all the way. But yeah. you bring yeah. in Jacoby, a guy who started, played like a top 15 caliber quarterback last year. Yeah. I think that motivates a young fella and says, hey, man, we got somebody who can get it done. And so also, you think it's real. I, I mean, I think it's yeah. real to the point where like they want Sam to get it. But if yeah. he stumbles and he stumbles yeah. dramatically, say so maybe he's not ready, yeah. we can give give this opportunity to a guy who's been there, done that, and Jacoby Rousseau. See, we, we all know how our parents do it. Like, our <laughs> parents would sit there, get all the kids right there, and say, you know what, kids? I ain't got no favor. All right, all y'all get out of here, but then they like Tanner, you is the fake. Right? So we know he's the favorite child right now. Now the thing about it is, do you like I said before, take advantage of the situation? They're trying to make sure he don't mm -hmm. de uh, digress anymore. They need him going forward. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I think. He's more of a security blanket mm -hmm. than anything. Like I said, he played as a top 15 quarterback last year. If that's what my backup can do, yeah. what, what standard have I set for my starter? Absolutely. My mom always said I was their favorite middle daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Only one in the middle. Only one. <laughs> but competition, we hear it all the time. Competition just breeds a better player and a better team. So that's what you hope comes out from this conversation um, and as the battle and training camp does continue. But let's break it down a little bit more. Let's get to the film and send you guys into the film room. It is presented by Amino. It pays to be healthy. All right, let's take a look at this film real quick. So Fred, yeah, we're going to take a look at Kansas City. Yeah. And I know that Patrick Mahomes is the quarterback and we're going to we're going to talk about Sam Howell quite a bit right here. Yep. We're not comparing the two, no. right? Because this guy's got a gold jacket already and we yep. got a guy who's a fifth round pick who's just getting his first start. Yep. What we are going to look at is we're going to say, what did they do in Kansas City that speaks to what Sam Howell does really well? And the first thing that I think is that they do a good job of stressing defenses horizontally, Most making different. them defend every ounce of the field. And so yep. when you look at this first play here, yep. right, Patrick Mahomes has an excellent arm, big time release. He's going to throw the ball to this comeback over here and create a ton of space. And think about it. They are on the they are on this hash here. I was, I was just about to say, hash, quarterbacks don't make this throw. They don't make this throw, right? Mm -hmm. And this allows them to kind of make sure the defense has to defend every blade of grass. This ball is getting completed almost to the sideline. Great throw, great catch. Yep. They do a great job of that, right? Because yes. it opens stuff underneath. Sam Howe, right, has the ability. Look, we're on this hash here. Yep. Far throw to our guy Jahan, right? Can he make this throw? Yeah. Absolutely, Absolutely can make can. this yep. throw. Yes, he can. Easy throw here. Great job stretching the field horizontally. Yep. So when I look at that 10, I say, they can do that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They can, because of Sam Howell's arm talent, yeah. they can stretch the field horizontally. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You are, and, and the ball came off of Sam's hand with some heat with on some it. Heat. And, and that's what you need to realize, and yeah. he kept it low. Yeah. I can always tell a quarterback arm, not if the ball drops down, can you throw it on the line 30 line. yards? He oh throws God. it on the line. Absolutely. The other thing they do a great job of is, I remember when I was, when I was in Houston and we played Kansas City, they make the field feel enormous, yeah. right? Yeah. And the other way they do that, horizontally, they also stretch you vertically. And Sam has shown an ability to do that because watch Patrick Mahomes here. Obviously, drop back, move the safety to the left, and then we're going to unleash a dime. Yes. 50 yards in the air. Great throw. Big explosive play. Makes you, makes you get a little soft in coverage. Yeah, right, it does. Fred? Yes, it does. And so, again, he showed an ability in his one start to do this. Terry versus off coverage here. We're going to line up. 
This is an easy read. It's not the same type of read. It's but not. Watch him air this ball out. You mentioned the arm talent. Yes. You mentioned the velocity. And we got players that can do that down the field and make you pay working vertical, right, Tanner? Make you pay the word for a boy. Do that. <laughs> and the touch on this ball yes. and the deliverance of this ball. Look at the shoulder and where it comes over with Terry. Look yeah. at Terry's late hand. The, 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 the receiver in the corner, they, they battling, they battling. But the late hands from Terry at the end of their play tells me not only you got a guy that can beat everybody, but we haven't had a quarterback that can continuously get yeah. Terry the ball. And then you got to think about it. This this guy been sitting, watching, watching yes. everybody the whole Absolutely. entire season. Yeah. So to get off the dog on bench yeah. and to make a throw on a line like yes. that, man, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. And the other thing it gives you is, is it allows you, when you get the stretch horizontally, mm -hmm. the stretch vertically, to work the underneath stuff. And I look at this and I say, this safety is very deep, yeah. right? There's a lot of space in the middle of this defense. How do we take advantage of it now that teams are worried about getting beat deep? We got guys at full width here, and the, the answer is we got to work underneath, Nick, right? Yeah. So we're going to throw a nice, easy screen, fake the chip here to Juju, easy throw, get out there, and then look at this grass, Fred. Yes, Holy it's cow. all grass. Wow. Hey, listen, the only thing, hey, I can feel a John Deere tractor in there. Do you understand <laughs> that? It's grass everywhere. Yeah. And so grass ever allows you to kind of make these plays underneath. Yeah. And in that Dallas game, Sam showed an ability to get that done. This is one of our favorite clips or one of my favorite clips because Jahan's going to run a little choice route here. Up, option, in. Mm. And look at the space that's created by the formation and by the threat of him being able to push the football down the field. Mm -hmm. You get this linebacker working away. Oof. Awesome job. A lot of grass here too, Fred. And Thanks. when you get grass for playmakers, Tana, uh, like I just think back to you when you caught the ball in space and yeah. it was like the defense's worst nightmare. And it wasn't me? You, you talking about the play against the Vikings? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what you're talking about right now. Right, uh, here we go again, guys. Head but, on the goal hey, post. That's this, all you got to do. We wind a little bit. Let me, this route is special. Yeah. And I think this yeah. is where he's going to – the upgrade from Kansas City wide receivers to yeah. our wide receivers, I think, is a step above what they can do. Because yeah. this right here setting the guy up, I'm talking the bounce, the hop step, and then wait him. He waited till the DB dropped. Yeah. And when he dropped, he gave it to him. This special right there. Yeah, absolutely. And now we can take advantage of that because we've yeah. stretched it. We've got the defense stretched yeah. to the max, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the other thing I think that is a big deal for us and yeah. what Sam can do well is he's very good at RPO, right? Yeah. Run pass option. He can hand the ball off here, or he can throw this little skinny post here to the receiver, and it makes it easy because these linebackers have to respect Spectre that run. run. They got to step Always. up in the box. Yeah, easy throws. Sand did this at, at school. It, yep, it's really it's good feel for that. Mm -hmm. Made a ton of plays on it in the preseason last year. Here's Baltimore, right? We get the same action in the backfield. RPO, nice little read here. Hand this off. And then we get easy throwing lanes. Look yes. At that. Talk about grass. Talk about space. That's great. I mean, he probably should have scored a touchdown here, too. Yeah, yeah great wide receivers uh, do. <laughs> so, but, you know, great job. And again, having a guy that can make that read in the backfield, yeah. get the ball out with that quick release, those are things that speak to him. And then maybe most importantly, especially for Sam as a rookie, is this guy's ability to create on third down. This is third and five. And they match the concept. Tampa Bay does a pretty good job here matching. And what can he do with his feet? Uh-uh. He, he can yes, skedazzle. He, yes, he can skedazzle. Uh -uh. Most definitely can do. And this breaks our back. Yeah. It's, it's a defense when we do everything right. Yeah. We do everything right. I check my guy. He check his guy. The rush is right. Yeah. And then this happens. Yes. It, it takes all the air and the energy out of the defense. Yeah, absolutely. And so our guy, we've seen him do it. That was one of the things we loved about the Dallas game. Yeah. Was his ability to elevate the offense by getting first downs on third down, stealing possessions, right? Yes. Because we got third down, right? Yeah. This is this is money down. Everyone's covered up. It doesn't feel good about it, right? Yeah. Let's go get it with our legs and keep this offense on the field. So those are some things that I think Sam can do. Utilizing that arm strength, yeah. pushing the football down the field, reaching the full width of the field, the full depth of the field, winning with the RPO game, and winning with his feet in third down critical situations as a scrambler. I think you're going to see EB really lean into that stuff yeah. and make Sam Howell kind of the best version of himself. And people, Professor Paul. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, Sam only had one start last season, and he certainly showed why he deserves a shot at the job. In the season finale against the Dallas Cowboys, Howell put up some quality numbers, leading the commanders to the victory and earning the game ball. He is one of the players our guys are watching out for on the practice field today. So let's send it outside to Logan, Fred, and Santana. 
It is your field pass brought to you by the Washington Times. All right, guys, first day of mini camp. Lots of energy, lots of excitement out here. A little hazy day out here, a little yeah. cloudy. Got yeah. that smoke coming in. And we got the young Airwolf up, get ready to make a throw here. Working routes on air, kind of spot throws. Mm -hmm. um, what have you thought of him so far uh, through the OTA period, Fred yeah. and Tana? Like, and what are you looking for from the uh, the mini camp period? What I do love about it, he's calm, cool, and collected. Sure. Like, it, nothing looks too big for him. Like, I'm not looking for him to go out here and complete nine, 90 yard pass. I look to see because he control the huddle, which he can. Yep. Does he know the language, which he does? And can he control the offense, which he's shown that he can? Yeah, you know, one of the things about, you know, right now is just getting familiar with everything. You know, um, he had a whole year to be a rookie. I mean, I know that people might say, you know, he only played one game, but being a rookie sometimes leads you to not playing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he got a chance to really get familiar with things. Now, the things that's going to be a lot different this year going into his second year is, now he has to be a rookie again into a yeah. new offense. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the difficult part about it. But when you're watching him out here so far so good, he's taking command and he's distributing the ball to the open guy. That's that's to me. And any receiver want to watch a quarterback, that's what you want to see him find the right open guys. Let's not forget that he practiced all year versus a top 10 defense. I, I think yeah. people forget the reps that he got in practice. I think people forget that, of course, him and Diamond Brown had a relationship going back from North Carolina, but I'm sure him and some receivers got that uh, relationship even tighter why he was the practice uh, quarterback here. Sure. So at the end of the day, don't forget those reps. But does he does he need does he need to prove something though? Yeah, well he got to prove something because he got to prove something to himself. I yeah. see. It ain't yeah. even really about yeah. prove something. People got to realize we talking about the number two pick. This was supposed to be a franchise changing talent. Yeah. And when you look at uh, his production, his production is there, especially in the first year. Don't let's not act like he wasn't defensive rookie of the year. There. Let's not act like yeah. he hasn't put up stats. But guess what? When you show me you can do that, yeah. That's what I want every week, Logan. That's yeah. what I want every year. And the one thing that has set him back is injury. And I I, I reiterate. This. Mentally, where is he yeah. at mentally? I think what he has to prove to me, just mainly, you know, and I don't think, you know, it's something just that he can be out there on the field. Sure. You know, available. You know, you want the guy like that because you know if he's available, he's going to go out there and be a, um, you know, uh, he's going to set the tone yep. and he's going to be a disruptor. Yeah. And so I think if he's available, because that, that's what folks fail to realize. We so we get caught up in so so much of the play part of it. Yeah. It's about being out there because sure. the play gonna come. You yeah. you're, yeah. you're a professional for a reason because yeah. you have that talent. Sure. Yeah. You can cut that switch on when you want to. So it's all about being available. The best ability, is availability. availability. Absolutely. Right, that's what it is. Well, guys, man, we got a lot of practice to watch yet, and I'm excited to watch it with the both of you. Make sure uh, I can't wait to watch. You know, the receivers, the running backs, the tight ends. Bring the DBs, up the DBs. All that stuff, mm -hmm. man. But we're not gonna talk about the DBs today. Hey, why not Forbes today? Hey, well, why not, man? Hey, guys, you want to talk about Forbes real quick? Let's talk about Forbes. About not, not just Forbes, you know, I'm talking about somebody else that I think need to. Yeah, really I thought get, we could get out of it. No, 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 I mean, somebody else that I think they need to get some light shine on him is Quan Martin. Right? Okay, like, he's a guy, number 20. Yes, he's a guy that his his athletic ability is off the chart. I think he jumped a 40, uh, yeah, 40, 44. 44 inch vertical, which is crazy. And I think he got the long, like this guy is a guy that I think people sleeping on because they so excited about Forbes, sure, that they forgetting about his it, it, like it's like being in a uh, rap group, kid, and yeah. like, like you got to have both of them. <laughs> Both of these guys yeah. bring that talent to the board. Yeah, one without the other. You right? can't have one yeah. without the other. Well, so, yeah, Quan Martin, obviously, they're working a little walkthrough over here, working kind of route combinations, matching it. So important for DBs, so important for him kind of being in that slot, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm really excited to watch more practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, can't, can't wait to cut it up with you guys some more. You got to love it, Ashburn, right now. You got to love it. Deron Payne among the veterans out at minicamp, but working with the new contract this year, Payne and the commanders reached an agreement earlier this offseason to keep him beside Jonathan Allen in the trenches. And if you look at the numbers Payne put up last season, it's easy to see why he earned that payday. Leadership, does that come with six years in? Yeah, 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 yeah? definitely. I feel like I'm one of them guys, is, like I don't really talk much. I try to put all my effort onto the field so you can just lead by doing. I'm one, I'm one of those guys. I feel we're finding you um, to have your words a little bit more than early on in your career, though. Yeah, I do talk a little. I do open up a little bit, just a little bit. We talk about you on that line uh, with John, the two of you on the inside making your Pro Bowl as well. And then we see Fedarian Mathis coming in, working himself back from injury and John Ridgway uh, showing that he had the ability to get in there and make some good plays. Where does this D-line, how good are you guys and can you be from where you already are? I mean, with all those guys coming back fresh, uh, I feel like it'll just be able, a chance to take a little pressure off of me and John. We don't have to stay out there the whole game and just try to 
put all the effort into that, we can rely on them to give us a breather and um, come back when we're fresh. You and John have been together for a long time. Where would you say your game's grown the most? Uh, probably just being able to like know know how each other like how how we do things, how we rush, mm -hmm. how we um, like how how we finish. Like I know Jay, he knows like when he's in a one technique, I know for a fact he gonna give me leeway to do whatever I want to, and he gonna finish off me, and it's the same way around. So. I think we just work work off each other well now. Finish this sentence. Um, 2023 for Deron Payne will be. Uh, a lot of sacks at TFS and big plays. We have tons of content like this every single day for you, so we hope you are enjoying it. Sure. On Mondays, it is a one-on-one -on -one exclusive interview. On Tuesday, it's a podcast. A lot of conversation yeah. just yeah. like this. Wednesday, it's our Command Center show. Thursday, it's Tana's Takes. Mm -hmm. Got a little best of the best this week. Mm -hmm. Best of the best? Best mm -hmm. of the best. All right. Okay, and then Logan lives in the pop comments on Friday. What do folks want to know? We're looking at how receivers or quarterbacks look at re receiver routes. Logan lies in the comments. <laughs> oh, and, Fred, and Fred's 40 yard dash. That's all we're looking at. Well, Fred, we also got a little extra content this week oh. as Fred in London were at Media Day chopping it up with the guys. We're here with Terry McCoy. Your heart. Chase Young back in the building. Montez Sweat, old dog. Rich homie Quan. <laughs> all pro rebound. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trash, man. Coming off a of Pro Bowl season. I've been playing for three franchises at this point. <laughs> you know? Whichever one's going to help us win, man. I've been asking everybody this question about swimming. How did you learn? Did your parents just kick you in the pool or did you take swimming lessons? No, that was my uncle. My uncle threw me in and said, figure it out. Figure it yeah. out. Throw you in the deep end? Yes. And you swim. Right. Or it, you feel me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Going against all those guys, man, I feel like it will just prepare me for what the season going to be like. Who's the best defensive player ever out of Mississippi State? Oh, you know what? Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm He's hey, right. Nah, swim nah. right. I took swimming lessons. Oh. Blah, 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 blah. I got thrown out that deep end. I swam, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> I took swimming lessons. Yeah, I took swimming lessons. Like a toenail. Like a toenail. Yeah. Like a toenail. Until you I'm with you. Oh, I don't yeah. realize how important that toenail is. And I think the commanders, like, we got a we got a good template to, to go in and set a new legacy. He looks phenomenal. He looks ready. I'm going to set the narrative. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Let's go. Swim lessons? Yeah, Dude. swim lessons. Dude. Now, we know up here, I got kicked in the pool. My dad a preacher. In the name of the Lord, he kicked me in the pool <laughs> and said, you going to swim, baby. You going to swim like Noah. Now, we I taught him. My dad, my dad got me in the pool and taught me how to swim. I didn't yeah. pay for swim lessons because I know that's what you're getting at. <laughs> I got some rich, trippy one boy. Yeah. You notice he asked me to ask Tan. I just keep that very clear. Overtime, man. Overtime, man. Yeah, but you're a Miami guy. You have to get lessons, Overtime. Right? My auntie had a pool, yeah. and we all used to go there every summer and get in. And everybody else was swimming, so I had to learn one way or another. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm from Florida as well. My mom, she dunked you in the deep end. Like, learn, you learn how to hold yeah. your breath. You learn how to come up, and then, you know, you take off from there. But... <laughs> Everybody but Sip Logan. That's just a little bit Sip of what happened on Media here. Day. Make sure you stay tuned because we'll be releasing great content as it comes out over the coming weeks. But Fred always fired up. And today he is fired up. Presented by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the Washington Commanders. Welcome to Fred Fired Up. And today I'm fired up because I have got humbled by fire. Yes. And they say the best lessons are learned by fire. Okay. And yet the Denver Nuggets Mm -hmm. Had to learn the hard way by fire. I apologize too. That man right there. Go give us. Yeah, I'm sorry, bro. I know it's your segment, but I want to be introduced the right way. Huh? Yeah. It's the man who was right. Carry on. It's the man who was right. Continue. <laughs> All right. Continue. At the end of the day, I'm fired up and I'm mad. <laughs> this is what I'm mad about. That he's going to stop winning. Like, they go all the way to Denver. This stadium was a mile high in the sky. Yep. They say they can't play because they from Miami. And guess what? Six feet over sea level. Yep. They go up there and Jimmy Butler and the rest of these guys just do the unthinkable. Oh, they beat the yep. Joker. And guess what? They just call me the Joker. And then I got to watch the Joker get beat like that. They should be ashamed for themselves. <laughs> But what I am going to do, what I am going to do is humble myself, bring right myself down, down, down earth, down, down. and I am going to say this, Pat Riley, what you are doing down there in Miami is the unthinkable. What the Heat are doing is changing the fabric of the NBA. They say you need stars, they say we don't. We won't even draft I'm our proud players. Proud We're just going to find our players. So you know what? To all Miami Heat, fans of them, and people, you get your just desserts, and you have brought Fred Smooth down to earth, and I am fired Never up. Never thought it would happen. And it's coming Never from, the heat happen. is coming from Miami. Work it on a little bit. Oh, look at this. Look at that. 
I could have sworn this was my steak. I thought this was my steak. Mm -hmm. This is what you I'm glad you're eating a little bit of crow right now. Yeah. And I'm sticking with the 305, yeah. one of my first jobs in the business, so I gotta, I gotta flex on you. I'm worth a tan all day long. But that also means that we're out of talking about football, so that's gonna do it for this show. Thanks for joining you us on Command Center. Of I'm course, swearing. follow all of it on YouTube. Let's fire. Mm -hmm. Fire up. That was good, friend. Nice shot, buddy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Dick, Chairman and CEO of Main Street Bank. Every dollar we touch is not our own. Every dollar represents the countless hours spent on the construction site, late nights in the office, time away from family and friends. Remembering this keeps us in touch with what we do and who we do it for. At Main Street Bank, we are honored to be stewards of our clients' dreams, aspirations, and their money. Bank where trust matters and where you matter. What are y'all guys still doing here? This is not a Marvel movie. We got no extra clips. But if you like what you're seeing, like and subscribe to the Commander's YouTube channel. We'll be right there waiting on you.